come expect it because there's something about the power of those waters anointed by the Holy Spirit. All of these are the work of the same Holy Spirit because he delights to be invited. Jesus calls him another comforter, the helper. Welcome back as we're discovering our journey with the Holy Spirit, being our helper, being our friend. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit helping lead us to pray for others. What? I got to pray for somebody else? Ooh, not only that, praying for others out loud. Boy, was that a, that a journey for me to get to. I didn't get to it overnight, and I don't know where you're at with it, but the Lord has so many great surprises for you if you'll just follow him, if you'll just take risk. Now, how, how can I pray in a non-religious way? There were times in my life where I would, if I go back into heaven and Jesus plays the films, I'm going to be so embarrassed of some of the religious things I was taught and how I approached people. No, no wonder they didn't want anything to do with Jesus. So I learned that, thankfully, by God's grace and spirit that you know, God's supernaturally natural in our lives. We're going to be who we are. It's going to be a natural process. It's not some whipped up hyper religious thing. So a lot of people, will, we have to help disciple sometimes to kind of like take those clothes off and let the Holy Spirit help you to just be who you are. And he wants to do that. He doesn't want you to be somebody that you're not. He wants you to be who you are. And, you know, the world is filled with judgment and criticism. And this generation and this culture, they can smell that a mile away. And they will have nothing to do with that. That's not going to penetrate their hearts. And they're not going to open up to you. But they also equally can smell authenticity a mile away. And they love that. And they love realness. And that's who the Holy Spirit is. And I think that's why when people meet the Holy Spirit, they're, they're so excited to let him be their friend because there's a trust and a love and a, a comfortness. And, you know, he has us. And so I, I think, um, you know, learning to verbally pray out loud for another person is a challenge. And it's like, ooh, do people want me to do that? Does God want me to do that? Should I do this? Can I just pray in my closet for other people? And the Lord has invited us to be his representative. And so you ha I have to remind myself, it's not about me. I'm not trying to do or prove anything to anybody. But Jesus wants me to be flesh and blood representing him. And so what, what we have to do is to learn how to partner with him. I want you to go with me to um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. And I want you to just see what he wants you to do. He has so much for you and for me, and we all get to play. And he talks about uh, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it's the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there's given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. That's great. To another, a message of knowledge. And uh, to another, faith. By the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing from the Spirit of God, to another miraculous power, to another prophesying, and to another distinguishing between spirits, and to another speaking in a different tongue, and to still another the interpretation of that tongue. All of these are the work of the same Holy Spirit. And he's going to distribute. They're his gifts. They're not mine. They're not yours. He, but he is going to distribute them. He's going to pass them out, so to speak. And, and he has something for each one of you. You know, um, as you learn this, this is a unique thing in the spirit. As you begin to learn, as you're moving with the spirit, we don't have all the gifts. The Holy Spirit does. But you begin to learn in different situations that you are in, 
It took me a while to figure this out. I used to try to pray for everybody kind of the same way and begin to learn that the Holy Spirit had his own unique way and design and gift that he might want to place in my hand for what I needed in the moment. And so you will see this as you begin to minister and, and learn to pray for other people. The Lord may give you, you know, as we just looked at, uh, he may give you a word of knowledge. Oh, what is a word of knowledge? You know, it, it would be maybe you're ministering to a teenager and the Lord just gives you, the Holy Spirit gives you this impression of something that has happened in their life. You have a knowing of what's going on in their world that you have no way of knowing, but you know that you know because the Holy Spirit is letting you know. So you, you craft that with the Holy Spirit and you learn how to ask the right question. You don't just come in and say, well, I know this about, but you begin to listen to the Holy Spirit you dial in, you ask the right questions, you poke around and let the Holy Spirit bring that. A prophetic word, it might be a calling out in somebody, something that you see that God has foreordained for them and, or a building up of faith, somebody that is so in despair, so in discouragement, they hide it from everybody. It looks like they're all together on the outside, but you know that there is a despondency and a despair and God wants to be the lifter of their, he wants to build faith in them, to lift up their faith. And so these are things, tools that you'll begin to learn to pull out, a uh, breaking off a stronghold, somebody that maybe uh, needs uh, setting free from bondages of their past. So they're walking with God, but they can't get free of certain things. They keep running back to it. And God's wanting to break those chains and set somebody free and give them the, those new habits. But how do you pray for that person? How do you come at them? You come at them. The, the Holy Spirit has stuff. He has stuff he wants to use with you. And he wants to use it at your school, at your work, at home. He just wants to pour it out on you. But learning to listen and cultivating that, that taking that risk with him. Uh, if you look in John 5, 19 through 20, it says that Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing of himself. He can do only what he sees the father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son does also. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and will show him even, and will show him even greater works than these so that you will be amazed. You know, that, that is a, a, a verse worth unpacking for us. That verse tells us that Jesus limited himself to depending on the Holy Spirit. And he, he could have done thousands of things every day. There were people that he walked by that didn't get healed. But what God was saying is he was showing us through Jesus and the Holy Spirit that we can look for what the Father's doing. Well, how do you look for what the Father's doing? You walk around and just, you know, you're walking around and, oh, what's God doing today? Kind of yes. You just, you submit to the Holy Spirit. You say, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm giving you my life. I will be open and willing to pray today. Whoever you have prayer, it may be a child. It may be, you know, um, a nudge. I happened to be in a situation where I was with a bunch of grandkids and I was at a botanical gardens and it was beautiful. And I got singled off with one of my grandchildren and, and it was kind of funny because something popped out of the mouth and, and it was like, boom, I felt the Holy Spirit say, like now, like, you know, I didn't attack her, but I was like, I like, no, this is not what you say about yourself and who said this and why and, and tears ejected in her life and, and somebody didn't mean to say it that way, but how she took it. And so what, I, what I ended up doing was praying with her and just breaking that off of her, breaking that chain that was going to develop into a lie, that was going to develop into something that would have had a very negative outcome in her life, in her world. And God broke it off of her. I saw it. I saw it in the spirit. It broke off of her. She wept. She's not a weeper. God did something to set her free in her little spirit. And you know, God wants to do that with you when he leads you. But, but stepping out to do things, you know, one thing with our family, but what about at school? What about at college? What about on your work, where you're at, you're traveling? 
Well, the Lord wants you to take a risk. He's asking you to. He wants you to come out of your fear zone. He's challenged me over and over in my life. I had to come out of my pride zone. I didn't want to look stupid. I didn't want to say the wrong thing. I had to come out of my apathy zone. Well, somebody else will do it, not me. And the Lord just had to make me take a risk after risk. And, you know, it was really neat because over the years I've learned to do this and God has met me every time. And I don't always get it right, but, you know, like John Wimber says, if people feel loved, that's the main thing. If they feel your concern, they'll know your heart of authenticity and that the Holy Spirit is loving them if you'll release that. And my mom and dad came to stay with me of recent. And it was so neat because my dad has just grown so tender with the Lord over the years. And, and he just has such a heart for God. And you know, he's probably pushing around 77, 78. But it, it seems like when I see people of the, as we're getting older, maturing, there becomes a more seriousness about the kingdom of God. Not that others aren't, but you know your time could be short and you want to be faithful to God and you don't want to miss an opportunity. It's not like you've got several years. And you know, so my dad was just... He, everywhere he goes, he's an evangelist and he loves to garage sale. And I used to think it was about the garage sale stuff. I now realize it's not about the stuff. It's about the people. So we were out garage selling with my dad and my mom. And, you know, we were just uh, gone to about seven or eight garage sales. And I, as I began to uh, watch him. I would look over there and he would be by some guy with a fishing pole talking about fishing. And he just had a way to angle into the conversation. And the guy would start talking about fishing. And then before you know it, my dad would do a simple thing like asking, what is it? Is there something in your life that's, that's you would need prayer for today? Is there something bothering you or something that you need or something? And inevitably, they would say yes. And they, he would begin to just right there at the garage sale, people all around pray. We'd go to the next one, he'd pray. Go to the next one, he'd be praying for some little lady with her teacup. And he's buying the teacup from her and, and ministering. And, she's, and so I was with him this particular day and it's kind of tired and I was kind of you know, dad's doing his thing and I'm, yeah, I just didn't want to be really involved. So I was staying way over at the end, pretending like I was looking at junk out here that I didn't care about, but it was like, I'm not getting into this right now. I just don't feel like it. I'm not into it. I don't want to. And it's my dad's thing. Next thing I know it, he's in the garage with a lady. Hey, Kim, come here. And he's calling me in. And I just, I just felt this, I don't want to pray for anybody right now. I guess I felt prayed out. I don't know. I, I just, and I quickly checked my heart and it was like, I felt the Holy Spirit just kind of grieved about my attitude. And I was just like, oh God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Didn't I pray today that I wanted to be used by you? You're opening a door. Okay. So as I went in with my dad, the, not only that, the Lord showed me afterwards, what a great moment with your dad. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm totally missing that. But a great moment with my dad. And then the Holy Spirit shows up on this lady. She's got a, a, a close person to her heart going through cancer, her husband. And then next thing you know it, somebody else shows up that has faith. And next thing you know it, we find out they've been to our church. They have this fundraising thing. We're all given to it. And it was just like a Holy Spirit moment. It was one of the Holy Spirit stories. And we got to go back and celebrate. My dad was elated. And, and I, you know, and I was just thanking Jesus for his forgiveness that he works with me in spite of me at times. And so as, as we just begin to uh, have a wonderful day, uh, just seeing God move, um, you know, he loves his people more than we do. He loves people more than we do. We have to get our love from him doesn't come naturally for us. Uh, I, f I felt like the Lord showed me this in another level. I, I get my nails done at this really nice place. There's a few treats I have for myself and I get my hair done and my nails done. And I've been going in there two or three years and they know I'm a Christian. They know I'm a, a, a pastor. I, there's a lot of different lifestyles that go on in this place. And I just bless and love and try to be an example. And there's this one gal and 
Uh, actually, she had done some stuff in the past that was very offensive to me, and, and it was really neat how God had just brought a healing with all of that, and I, I worked through just, hey, just forgive her, love her, move on. And as I did that, God just gave me a real opportunity. I'm sitting there getting my pedicure, and um, there's another lady next to me, an older lady. There's three other ladies getting their work done, and you know, I'm sitting here. I've known this girl. Let's call her Sally. And as Sally's done my, my nails forever and talks a little bit, but all of a sudden Sally's talking a lot and all of a sudden she she can't look up and tears are filling her eyes and and it's like she starts telling me more stuff than I anybody's probably just about what she's feeling and she more she talks about it she starts moving into crying almost shaking can't even do my nails and I'm I'm embarrassed for her and I'm like okay Lord oh what's the prayer we pray oh God oh God oh God help Holy Spirit, what are you doing right here? And again, you know, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be the preachy pastor here. I don't want to like start talking to her and trying to pray for her. And you got this lady and that. I don't want to, you know, rock the boat, you know, get her in trouble. I got all of these excuses. Just, I don't know if you guys go through this or not, but so anyway, I just threw it to the wind and said, Holy Spirit, Use my mouth, use my heart, let me minister to her. And as I began, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. Simple as this. You may say, what's a word of knowledge? He simply said it was about her family. And so as I began to talk to her, I talked about the Lord caring about her and caring about the things that she cared about and even her family situation. Boo-hoo-hoo, tears are coming. She's crying. My family, you know, she starts unloading the whole thing about her family. Well, I didn't know that. Spirit did. But I was obedient and I took a risk. And God's going to call you to take risk. Next thing you know it, I'm bypassing my pride, worrying about this woman. It's like the Lord remind me, she could be one of mine and praying for you. And I was like, oh yeah. Okay. And so I'm just moving on in this. And I'm telling you, I'm worried that she's going to get fired because she's having a meltdown in my, at my feet. And I wanted to say, don't even worry about the toes, you know? And she's like, I, I'm crying all over your toes. I know I may, you know, I'm like, no, it's okay. It's okay. We don't even have to worry about the toes. And so it was really neat though. This is how the Lord works. If we're willing, he wants to help us pray for others. Now, he's going to call you in a different way. You may be out on a fishing trip in a boat, and you may have some other guys with you, and God gives you an opportunity. We don't push our way in, but we look for opportunities. And sometimes they come quickly. In my situation, I built relationship with her. She had seen my care for her. I tipped well. <laughs> so, you know, God uses these things in our life. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel like that God wants you today to be able to say, yes, I will take a risk. It's going to be like feeling, uh, as John Wimber would say, it feels like being 20 miles away from home, out of gas, no money, no credit card, no cell phone. Oh God, oh God, help. And that's the feeling I get every time. I never come at it and say, whew, I got this one. I don't want this without you, Holy Spirit, because I can mess it up. But I do know how to listen to him. And it's taken years of me just cultivating, practicing his presence, listening to him, and being obedient. And tonight, I think the Lord wants to do something fresh in your heart to release you from fears and the things. What would hold you back? Maybe you want to talk about that in the group. Maybe things and opportunities are asking God to give you an opportunity because I promise you he will. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close. Father, we thank you so much that you have given us the greatest gift, your Holy Spirit, that he's a person, that he's dwelling in us, and that we have a friend a helper indeed, that we can depend on every day of our lives. We're not alone. You've got us. And we thank you so much that you are patient with us, that you encourage us, that you strengthen us. And I pray for each one at the groups that you would bless them with an abundance of your grace and to be reminded that they're not going to feel bold or strong 
is the power of ugly. They're going to feel weak, but when they step out, you love to see that because you love to show up and surprise us with your grace and your gifts, surprised by your spirit. Thank you for your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.